Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is a build guide for the AOS Cine 40, a 4 inch guarded prop design for carrying a GoPro or a naked Blackmagic Pocket Cinema. This frame is incredibly easy to build, but it never hurts to have a few tips and tricks to help you out along the way, so we're going to go through the entire build from start to finish and give you a look at the frame and how it all goes together. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. Make sure to check out the links down in the video description for tuning guides, recommended parts and 3D prints for all of these frames. Let's start by building up the brand new 7000 series aluminium camera cage. And for this you'll need the two camera cage parts, the two soft mount camera plates and potentially the two hard mount camera plates. If you're building for DJI 03 you're going to be using the two soft mount camera plates with the two included silicon gummies. If you're wanting to hard mount a 19mm analog FPV camera say, then you are also going to use the two hard mount camera plates as well. If you're mounting some other type of camera, maybe a 14mm camera, there are loads of 3D prints available that fit these soft mount camera plates and that'll make sure that you can get the camera mounted exactly the way you want to. Firstly, you're going to set up the two camera cage parts back to back like this. And don't worry, they're completely identical and symmetric. So provided they look back to back like this, then you've got them the right way around. Then you're going to drop the two soft mount camera plates onto the camera cage parts like this. And they just stud in there. And if you're hard mounting an analog FPV camera, you're also going to stack the hard mount plate on top of the soft mount plate to make a thicker stack like this. And you're going to have to decide whether you want the two holes for the camera mounting to the rear or to the front of the cage. And that's going to depend on how the mounting holes are laid out for your camera. I'm going to be building for DJI 03. So I'm just going to be putting the soft mount plate in. Once you've decided on your stack, you're going to take the screws. So if you're just using the soft mount plate, you're going to be using the M2 by four millimeter countersunk screws. And if you're using the hard mount plate as well, then you're going to want to use the M2 by six millimeter countersunk screws. Once you've picked the right screws, you're just going to want to drop them into the camera plate and then screw them gently into the camera cage. Now, 7000 series aluminium is pretty tough, but these are small screws. So you don't want to use too much torque when you're tightening these up. Just do them up just gently. And you can see that I'm holding the screwdriver by this sort of thin shaft here so that I don't apply too much torque to these screws and I don't risk stripping them out. If you're assembling, if you're assembling the hard mount camera cage, then you're just going to want to drop the slightly longer M2 by 6 millimeter countersunk screw down through both plates in the stack. And then again, just gently screw it into the camera cage. It will be obvious to you when you're assembling these, but just make sure the countersink is uppermost on the plates when you assemble them so that the countersunk screws end up nice and flush with the carbon fiber plate. Once you have the two halves of the camera cage assembled, you can just kind of drop the soft mount silicon gummies in and put these two parts to one side while we move on with building the rest of the frame. Now we can start the main frame build. And before you begin, you're gonna to want to make sure that you have the main plate in the right orientation. The press nuts on the plate should be facing upwards. So if you lay it down on the bench and run your fingers along the main plate, you should feel the press nuts sticking up out of the main plate. That will tell you that you have the plate in the right orientation. We'll start by installing the stack screws and the Cine 40 is designed for a 30 by 30 two high stack in the middle in this sort of diamond configuration. So take the screws that came with your flight controller and ESC stack and install them up through the bottom plate and screw them into the press nuts that are installed in the main plate. When you're tightening these screws, make sure that they are nice and tight. They're going into steel press nuts, so it's very hard to strip them out. And you do want to give them a nice twist with your driver just to make sure they're nice and firm. I would use at least sort of three fingers on the driver to make sure that you're getting enough torque and that the screws are nicely firmly screwed in. At this stage, you can actually install all your motors and your stack onto the main plate like this. I would wait with the VTX because it's easier to install that later, but certainly you can put the motors and electronics in place. The next step is to install the standoffs onto the main plate. And for this, you're going to be using the medium length M3 screws in your kit and the M3 standoffs. Once you've worked yourself around the outside of the frame, you should have installed 10 standoffs. There are four more to install in the middle of the frame, just around the stack here. 
Once you've installed all of the standoffs, it's now time to install the camera cage into the front of the frame. For this, you're going to be using the medium length M2 button head screws. When tightening these M2 button head screws, don't use too much torque because they're smaller M2 screws and they're threading into aluminium. And while 7000 series aluminium is very hard, it's not quite as hard as steel. So I would just hold the driver just by the shaft rather than by the handle and that will ensure that you don't apply too much torque but that you can get those screws nice and snug. Now it's time to assemble the prop guards down onto these standoffs and you'll have two different designs of prop guard. The front prop guard has a double hole which matches up with the camera cage so that's going to go there and the rear prop guard has two single holes. The rounded end of the rear prop guard goes towards the rear and the slightly triangular end is going to lock together with the front prop guard in the middle here. Once you've assembled the prop guards down onto the standoffs like this, you're going to assemble them using one M3 medium length screw down into each corner here and here. Then you're going to repeat for the other side. Once these prop guards are assembled, we're going to put this main assembly to the side for one moment. Now we're going to assemble the two struts for the prop guards. And each of the struts will have an M3 press nut. You want the press nut facing down towards the bench for this assembly. So I'm just going to flip those both over. And you're also going to want the two little brace plates. Each brace plate is going to go down onto the press nut in this orientation. So you have the two holes slightly outboard of where the press nut is. And you're going to install those using the short M3 button head screws. Once you've assembled these two struts, you can bring back the main assembly. Now we're going to assemble the prop guard struts into the build. And you're just going to want to line up the two holes in the brace plate with the two holes in each of the prop guards here. And you can see that the two parts are kind of rotationally symmetric around the center. So one arm will head to the rear of the frame and one arm will head to the front of the frame. It doesn't make any difference whether it's the left or right that heads backwards or forwards but there'll only be one way which you can correctly assemble them. Once you've got them laid out, you're going to use the M3 medium length screws to secure them to the prop guards here. Once those two brace plates are installed, you may just want to move the strut slightly to line up the holes in the strut with the standoffs below them. Obviously, this is what's going to make a difference when we come to assemble extra parts on top. It's good to have those lined up. Now we're going to take the other two struts and you'll have a front strut which has four holes at one end and that obviously lines up with the camera cage so that's going to go in front and we have a second strut which has just two single holes and that's going to go to the rear of the frame. Once these are in place you're going to assemble the rear strut with two medium length M3 screws and the front strut with four longer M2 screws. Again, when you're screwing in these M2 screws, just make sure you use a little bit less torque than you would with an M3 screw, just to make sure that you're not at risk of stripping anything out. Just use sort of two fingers on the handle, or even better, just use the shaft of the screwdriver to drive them in. Now we're gonna install the VTX plate onto the frame. And this is where I'd recommend that you install your VTX. So you're gonna screw it or double-sided sticky tape it to this plate before you assemble it into the frame. And of course, you can also install the camera at the same time. To install this plate, you're going to need four long M3 screws and the four nylon spacers in your kit. You just want to pass the four long screws down through the M3 screw holes in the corners of this plate. And then just turn the plate to the side and install the 10 millimeter spacers. At this point, I would take an M2 driver like this and just check that all of the holes are nice and clear for your screws and checking that all of these struts are nicely lined up. And then you're just going to very carefully move and line up so that all of the screws and spacers fall down into the screw holes, the holes in the plates and the standoffs below. And then you're just going to do those up with an M3 driver. 
And there you have it. And those spaces on this plate give you enough clearance between your stack and the VTX that's going to sit above it. Also, when the frame is sitting down on this base plate, it also gives you a lot more clearance for your props so that your props aren't going to touch the ground when you take off. At this point, the frame build is pretty much complete. If you're going to install a naked Blackmagic Pocket Cinema to the top of this frame, then you're going to be using these four mounting holes next to the motors. If, however, you're going to be installing a GoPro, then you're also going to want to install this battery plate on top of the frame. And for that, you're going to use the M3 medium length countersunk screws and the short nylon spacers just to stand that plate off a little bit from the base plate so that you can slide a battery strap underneath it. And with that, the frame build is complete. Don't forget to check out the links down in the video description for tuning guides, recommended parts, and 3D prints for all of these frames. And until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.